guys, it's Kelly. I am back with another process video. This layout is for Coco Daisy using their January kit that is called Buttercup and it is full of Pink Paisley's beautiful collection Moonstruck. So this page is actually going to be a companion page to the video that I posted earlier. Uh, this is a um, photo of me and my husband. We had a date night at a really pretty hotel and the decorations around Christmas time and the flowers were just gorgeous. So um, I might actually have a few more layouts, um, you know, just for the inside of the hotel and um, not to mention the food was fantastic. So anyway, this page will be the companion page and I wanted to try something a little bit different. I know that this has been done hundreds of times, but I had not done it yet. And uh, what I am going to do is actually just trim off, um, I think it was a quarter of an inch off my white cardstock, and I am going to layer a piece of pattern paper behind it. I do borders all the time. I just usually do them on top of the page as opposed to behind the page, but I thought I would change it up a little bit. And um, at one point, but this is off screen, I will sew the white cardstock down just to help keep it in place as well. And if you can hear my kitties, I'm sorry. I've got one in my lap and the other one is jealous that he's not in it. And uh, he's being a little vocal. So I am going to mount my photo on some white cardstock. And of course, with my love of doilies, I am going to pull out a doily and uh, use that behind my photo as well. So as a companion page for me, what I like to do is um, use the same colors and maybe pull some of the same papers in, but I don't want it to match completely. I feel like if I have to try to make the layout match completely that it's just a little bit more difficult for me. It constrains me in my mind. Not necessarily uh, the case, but just for me I feel like I have more creative freedom if I just pull in some of the same colors or maybe the same embellishments or the same motif such as uh, the butterfly and the pretty flowers. So that is how I am approaching this page. Now I do want to pull in that pretty watercolor paper that is a Coco Daisy exclusive and it's probably one of my favorite papers in the kit. So I trimmed the houndstooth paper down just a little bit. It really pained me to uh, cut into that floral paper because if you have followed me for a while, you know that I love to fussy cut flowers from papers. And I'm just going to say this. Why do both of the sides of the paper have to be pretty? Most papers, I either just like the A side or the B side. And I'm content with that, but I cannot stand it when I have paper, a piece of paper that I love both sides for. Um, and I know that I could just buy two sheets, but I try to make my scrappy purchases go as far as I can. So uh, it just, I know that I'm not the only one that thinks that. So I am going to mount my photo on some craft foam. I just bought this at Michael's. Um, I am going to say that when I finish this, I do want to try the adhesive backed foam. But, you know, I bought a package and that package is uh, not even halfway through and I've been using it for months. So I decided I wanted a bit of a different texture behind my photo and I'm using this gold marbled vellum that came in the kit and I'm just tearing off the edges. Now, I, when I have a piece of paper like this or the vellum or an acetate, um, I make it difficult for me. I hoard and I want to use as much of that vellum as I possibly can. So it would have been easier for me to tear the edges if I had uh, cut the square a little bit bigger, but um, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. So I wanted to make another cluster on the left side of the page, and again, I wanted to see some of that pretty vellum. I actually used that vellum as a border on the top and the bottom of the companion page, so I did want to be able to see some of it without it uh, echoing the same 
I guess, layout. And just to bring a little bit more continuity, I put a little strip of that houndstooth paper as well. So this is when I have sewed down the left side of the layout, uh, just to make sure that it does stay put. And I also mirrored the exclusive washi tape that came in the kit, that exact, I think that came in the Day of the Life kit. Um, the, it's a beautiful red latticework lace washi. Um, it, it's just striking. It's different than anything that I have seen. So one of the things, you know, like I mentioned before, for me to make a companion page was to pull in some of the same elements. And on the other page, I did have some butterflies and I had some of these gorgeous flowers. And, you know, the colors in both of the photos work well with the dark red flowers. And so that um, is just one of the things that I knew that I wanted to bring over. And then the paler pinks just worked beautifully. And I don't care that it has a picture of my husband, you know, with using flowers and butterflies. He doesn't care. Um, you know, I'm, if it has a page with me in it, I have no qualms making it more of a feminine page. So I did mount this die cut on some foam as well. I love to have differing heights in my clusters. I just feel like it really brings some more interest to my page and I'd like to be able to tuck things underneath. So I, it's just one of my favorite things at the moment to do. So this is the way you can make your die cut work for you and what you need. Um, I cannot, I think this said tell your story, um, but I cut it and I'm going to cover up the why so it says our story. And I just thought that that worked well for, you know, our date and you know, again, here I am just altering the height of the, flor the floral die cut so that the heart and the banner can tuck underneath it. And it just, you know, when you have things that touch and overlap, it, it makes things really feel like they belong. So I have a love-hate relationship with rub-ons, and I know that I'm not alone with this. I am fussy cutting out this rub-on because the rub-on stuck to the back sheet that it is supposed to like peel off of. This was the only rub-on that did it in the package. I have no idea what happened with it, but I am going to attempt to Xyron it and see if that will stick and that doesn't really stick as well. So I end up actually not using it on this page. I will cut out a few more of the butterflies and use those. Um, and I apologize if you can hear my cats. They are just um, trying to play King of the Mountain. And um, I close the door to keep them out and they scream bloody murder because they have to be where I am. So I'm sorry if you can hear it. So this rub-on peeled back beautifully and it was very easy and smooth to adhere to my background. The butterflies in this collection are just so pretty. Um, they have the gold, the pale pink, and then that two-toned uh, pink butterfly. It's just so pretty. Um, I, probably one of my favorite things of the kit. So this little piece of paper um, that has all these little squares across it, I am so glad that companies are doing this. It gives a great way to introduce either, you know, that little pop of a pattern paper that you're looking for or another little embellishment. Uh, this paper also has words that are typed, um, so you can, you know, fussy cut those out and just add them into clusters. It is one of my favorite things to do because I really feel like that you can have too much paper. I can't believe I just said that, but the embellishments are what I crave because I feel like I, I get tired of the collection if I don't have pretty embellishments to play with. And, you know, to pay a dollar for a piece of paper that you can create many embellishments with, to me, is a great way to stretch your collection and, you know, 
stretch your supplies. And so for me personally, I am going to be on the lookout for papers like this so that I can, you know, get more bang for my buck. So the rub-ons had these really pretty little gold, uh, kind of like asterisks, um, but not quite. Anyway, I thought that they would look pretty tucked underneath my clusters and just to help bring out the gold in the vellum and just add a little bit of extra bling to the page. And I do love the way that it looks. So I am not going to lie to you about this. I really struggled with the placement of the butterflies. And I know in my head that I made it more difficult than it needed to be. Uh, what I was trying to do was balance the colors and I felt like that the white butterfly was standing out too much. And, you know, I really wanted to find a different butterfly or a, a multicolored butterfly like the one, the rub-on that's already down. And I didn't see it. And like I said, I just made it more trouble than it really needed to be. You know, sometimes you can overthink something. When I do, I, you know, it doesn't get me upset. I may get a little frustrated um, because I know what I want. I just can't achieve what I want. And, you know, for me, I'm okay with that because that's all part of the creative process for me. I feel like that when I do struggle, I learn more about just the creative process in general. And, you know, some pages just come very easy and some are not so easy. So I don't know if um, that helps anyone, but you know, for me, it's just, this is creative time for me and it's fun time. And if I can't get the page done, I will walk away from it, come back to it. And you know, I've even like started over. So, you know, don't ever feel like if you can't get something to work that you have to keep on doing it. But, you know, anyway, so I just wanted to basically let you know that, yes, I did really struggle with this layout quite a bit. And I did, uh, or, you know, just like with the butterfly piece placement, basically. So off camera, I had cut out a few more of the gold, I don't want to say they're asterisks, but they're not. They're not stars. I guess they're similar to stars, just a little bit different. They're not a traditional star. But I, I felt like if I didn't use them on this page that I might not use them um, and that they would just get left on the rub-on sheet. So I thought that I would sprinkle them around the page um, in a similar fashion as I would, you know, either gold mist or, uh, you know, um, sequins or something like that. So I just thought that it would be a nice way to bring more of that uh, gold to the page. So the only other thing that I end up doing is I sit on this layout for a while because I felt like it really needed something, although I wasn't quite sure what. And if you look in the close-ups, you will see that I put a little bit of gold metallic thread in the clusters. And I felt like that that was just the thing that was needed on the page. So thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.